Okay. Hi there. Um, I'm going to try to do something new. Um, basically, I review the works of others, but this is the first time I am trying to review my own works from years back. This one is from six or seven years ago. Um, I am also not used to record my own voice for anything. <laughs> so, um, please cut me some slack. Uh, moreover, I also don't speak English natively. However, I am going to try really, really hard to uh, be clear, be concise. And uh, the objective is basically to convey a song of my Einar dialogue. So this video could be more helpful for you. Okay. So let's start with this pose. It's a pose that has a very glaring defect right from the bat, as people say. Um, basically, the rib cage is way too short. And not only that, it's too wide too. And I'm going to <coughs> try to tackle that before <coughs> deciding on how to complete the, the left arm and the foot fit. <laughs> um, I am also not uh, happy at all with the skull. The skull shape is such a mess. Um, so let's mark those right now. Rip cache. These are self-evident, but let's mark them anyway. Um, I am going to create another uh, duplicate or a duplicate <laughs> of the original so you can notice the, the changes a bit better I am going to grab um, this area and I will try to preserve just the the elements that were mm, okay -ish, or that were not too bad. So this video does not get does not go too long or longer than it should be. Uh, let's try to uh, locate that new rib cage, okay? And let's find the middle line. And with the middle line, I can already see that the breasts are not where they should be. They are basically, the, the one that's near us is too, uh, too far detached from the lateral side of her body. I think that silhouette works for me. I need to remember that this video is going to to be as safe for work as possible, so <laughs> I cannot go into details with the breast, but hopefully you will still find it useful. I may be going to do a non safe for war version and I'm going to post that uh, on the Patreon. Not trying to shield too early, but <laughs> it's um, a valid explanation for the restrictions in this side. Oh, disable that too early. Okay, that basically fixes the the length of the rib cage. I 
I can try to be a bit more um, detailed with the way the rickage connects to the to the waist. I also want to relate this contour of the of her tie to the other side. So let's do that to create a stronger unity. And basically what I have here is the waist, the anterior, superior, ilia, crest. So let's mark that just for reference sake. This area that looks like a wireframe is the obliques. So that area looks a bit squishy. It's like softer. Um, yeah, I messed up. <laughs> I messed up, but you know what? I can use this to be, to be frank. It's not, it's not an entire mistake because I can use and uh, that and uh, those marks to semi render the obliques. I really want to emphasize that this section is softer and this one is hard. This one should be more angular. This one, as I say, should be softer. So I'm going to use a gentler curve. And this one, again, is more angular because those are the waist bones. This area here is a bit softer because it's part of the tank. This is basically the great trochanter that's pushing out. I hope the this hatching here conveys that. And I'm going to modify the um, line width to convey that too. Um, yeah, that's that's already better. You want to see? That's <laughs> much better already. Um, I want to make that transition to the obliques a bit gentler. Because part of the obliques uh, are attached to the last ribs. And I don't want to make that separation too obvious because it's a, a more subtle transition. Okay. Uh, right now I am just trying to make the insertion of the biceps uh, more subtle. Mm. Yeah, that's better. And since the arm is locked and stretched, that means that the triceps is going to bulge a lot. Like, I think the original was like that. No, not much. <laughs> uh, I was confused in the original. I used the shoulder blade shape to do my uh, triceps here. <laughs> Basically, the shoulder blade is overlapped by the triceps. So you are no longer seeing her, her shoulder blade. But that's, uh, that's the way it is. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me think what should I do next. I think I, I want to, the lateral side of her forearm, I want to define it better. Usually the lateral side, you have the brachioradialis muscle. That's the one that creates that bump on the lateral, lateral side of the forearm. And that's the one I am defining right now, this one. Um, that, that side also creates a higher bump. 
than the medial side, okay? Um, the medial side usually sticks less and it creates a rhythm that's, uh, that's like downwards compared to the lateral side. What I mean is this, basically, sorry to be a bit vague. vague. This is the lateral, lateral side and it's higher. Okay, and this is the, um, the medial side, and it's lower. So you should try to aim for that, those rhythms, uh, because those are which gives the characteristic look to the limbs, the rhythms. And yeah, try to preserve that. Um, I have to <laughs> fight the urge to, uh, you know, detail the, the, the rest too much. <laughs> but hopefully, as long as the nipples are not rendered, uh, it should be okay. No, however, as I said, I'm going to do a safe for work version later. Oh, sorry, no safe for work version later. Um, I am also making them bigger, but hopefully it will make sense in the end. This part is going to create a fold. Skin fold. that comprises the, uh, the navel. And yeah, why not make her shovier? <laughs> Let's flip. Um, I think that's better. No, I am sure it's better. Sorry to, <laughs> to sound a bit doubtful. It's just that um, I am still getting used to work and talk at the same time. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. Because I feel when I am drawing, I feel like I'm using most of my focus. It's a very taxing task. I, I definitely don't have any inner um, skill for this. And maybe that's part of the appeal that I force myself to do it. Okay, um, two things. The length of this tie is too long. Second thing, this leg is so broken, man. <laughs> it's so broken, it's almost concave, right? And that cannot be, obviously, that cannot be. Let's see what I, what I, yeah. It was broken from the start. I, for a moment, I was afraid I, <laughs> I messed it, messed, messed it up in the process, but that was not the case. Um, not to make more excuses, but I am used that this brush, and if you follow my work, you know that my work looks a bit greedier because I use um, a 6B brush. The issue that I, I, I think I am going to have with this one is that it's going to be a bit too much grain. Well, let's try that. The thing is that <laughs> this video is a bit of a mess already, so I am going to try to not put more obstacles in the middle. So let's tackle the length of these uh, limbs. 
and shape of this limb so you you want to make the limb the tie taper down towards the knee okay i am also going to try to make more um the calves, I'm going to make them thicker to match the body. And make them less angular because They cannot be that angular when she's that thick. The ankle also has this rhythm. Uh, the lateral side is lower and the medial side is higher. But because uh, this leg, this a specific case, the leg is uh, crossed. It's probably not a good idea to to mark that just yet. I, I am trying to locate um, a good. Uh, I, I am trying to. Sorry. I try to find a good location for the uh, the foot. I'm not entirely convinced. I am trying to gauge uh, where it should, where it looks more natural. I also want to show the instep. Trying to fix the knee too. Okay, here uh, I am trying to, to create a rough shadow for the pectoralis that is stretching towards that arm. Let's increase that canvas size. By the way, um, I am using a first gen iPad Pro and it is not rare that it crashes as I record because I do record videos I just don't record my own voice and that's why I put that one there that tells me the order of the video in case it crashes before I I finish it so keep that in mind Probably should have done that in another layer. <laughs> it's a bit late for that. Hold on. Uh, let me flip back here.
Yeah, that looks much better. Basically, let me erase that. And let's find a better color. So, basically that's what the tide is doing. It's going toward that iliac crest. And that was not conveyed uh, in the original. I, I really like to use uh, drop shadows to infer some some groundness. And let's check back to the original. It has been a while. Yeah, <laughs> that looks better. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't want to stroke myself a bit too much. And let's keep going. Um, what should I do with the, the other forum? I have no idea. It doesn't help that it's midnight here. I'm, <laughs> I am trying to to catch as little as po uh, little noise as possible. That's why I am recording so late, but not too late that I am sleepy. Okay, and for the internal lines, you want to uh, offset the transition from line to value as much as possible. So these lines feel like, like they are related to the rendering. Even if you don't render, you don't paint the sketch, you will gain a lot of appeal trying to um, trying to, to to make those lines uh, transition towards values is is similar to what I did here, for example, with the waist. Yeah, let's, let's try to do something. This is going to be a bit boring. It looks uh, like it fits. And when I say it looks like it fits, I mean that the wall pose feels like it's conveying the same message. Like she's uh, nonchalant, just sitting there, uh, looking sexy. <laughs> Let's try to make that neck a bit more, I don't know, a, a bit more uh, stylized.
And let's try to find a better shape for the skull. Okay, that was one of the many things I say that the start. And let's tackle that. I, I don't want to have any feeders because they might counterindicate what I am trying to establish uh, with a new shape of the skull. One thing I, I like to do, just to keep that, uh, this in mind, is to um, define, to uh, angularize. Is that a word? Angularize? I, I don't know. Basically, define clear planes on the skull. Side, top, front. You can tell these planes, even if I disable those nodes, they are there. And that helps me because uh, the features of the face, obviously, they have to be constrained to the, to the frontal plane. trying to use my occlusion shadows to define better forms. And let's dive in. Maybe I'm going to try to do something more um, figurative <laughs> because the past size were like Placeholder. I, I like to do bottom eyes, or bottom eyes. I, I don't remember the exact term. Um, I think they look cute. In if you notice my work, that that's a common trait. But since this is our review of a past work, let's make it more more complete in an objective sense. Notice uh, I am leaving uh, one eye of separation. I am respecting the front plane. Um, I am also trying to um, uh, to go a bit more uh, subtle to see if I can I can be more aware of chances, opportunities to to expand the, the, the drawing more. Okay, let me check. And let's play up the stylization a bit more. And by that I mean to, I want to to make the, um, the head a bit bigger. It's okay as it is now. <laughs> uh, I don't want to be strictly to anatomical like it was a study. I mean, I think it was a study. However, <laughs> it was a very quick study back then and I was not very attentive. Wow, that leg was so messed up, man. Can you believe it? <laughs> it seems like the, <laughs> the origin point of that tide was the genital area. What a mess, man. I mean, you can see that, but that cannot be the leg. That just the, uh, the waist bone peaking there, but the leg was originating in a very wrong position. Um, Okay, so the skull, the, the head as a wall, as a whole, <laughs> uh, should be, maybe it could be bigger. So she looks more playful if I can, if I tilt that head. The 
let's see. Could be bigger. Mm. Yeah, maybe. That's that feels okay. Okay, so let's see. Do I want to make her look at the viewer? For that, I need to make the pupil and the irises almost perfectly circular. And that's a good tip to keep in mind when you want your character to look at the viewer directly. You make the pupils and uh, irises uh, as circular as possible. Or you can leave it to the imagination. You use um, uh, eliminate the pupils and you can make it more subjective. So um, you leave to the viewer the task to complete the, the piece, okay? It really depends what what you you're going for. In this case, I think I want I want to leave it like that and just give a hint of the of the pupils and also oh, the eyebrows Let's flip the canvas and let's notice <laughs> things that should not be as they are right now. And I am noticing that the skull is a bit too tall. No, I think that's better. Let's compare. I bet it's going to look much more different. Okay. That's going well, uh, despite... <laughs> this is... I don't work as slow as... Or maybe I do. But the thing is that I, I am noticing I am not um, I am not very efficient with my with my workflow right now because uh, the thing between the, the, the balancing between drawing and talking at the same time is uh, is making me uh, horribly anxious. Hopefully, if this thing works out, future videos are going to be much better. Or eventually, <laughs> they're going to get better. Um, 
Okay. Um, let's see. Let me check. Uh, how many minutes? Wow, half an hour. <laughs> What I did there is to put some placeholders with some indication of volume for the fingers. Um, and I am basically drawing and painting, if you notice. I am use, use, using, sorry, using my uh, negative space to carve around the, um, the volume itself and come up with a better silhouette. See? And that's basically uh, something I have to do because I am working in a relatively low resolution because if I put the resolution way higher or even higher than it is right now, I bet you uh, Procreate will have crashed a long time ago. I am actually surprised it has been quite stable right now. Okay. That forearm is too thin, even as a placeholder. <laughs> uh, that was too thin. So yeah, um, trying really hard to to draw and trying to come up with some something useful to say. I'm sorry if I go some. Uh, some portions without saying anything, but uh, <laughs> sometimes I, I feel like I can need some processing power for the drawing itself. Um, okay, uh, I have been placing some occlusion shelves. These are occlusion shelves um, to define the volume of the surface where the shell falls, okay? In this case, the leg, I am curving my shell and telling the viewer with my shell that the leg is curvier, the, the tie to be exact. <laughs> In Spanish, we call it leg anyway. <laughs> Most of the time, there is a word for tie, but we don't use it for humans. We call it muslo. And usually we only say that for the, the chicken. Okay. Let's see. I feel like I have a mess here on the right side and I need to simplify a bit more aggressively, aggressively <laughs> this area.
don't need so many strands because that looks confusing. Mm, this strand here are a bit uh, overwhelming. <laughs> um, Here with the shadow, I am trying to show how the pectoralis tucks in uh, the, the arm because it's getting compressed. It attaches to the arm and when the arm is right next to the lateral side of the body, it tucks in, it gets so compressed that you can see a separation of the pectoralis from the breast. Uh, the breast mass and I'm still fighting the urge to <laughs> to go and detail the the nipples that's that's going to come but it's going to be later probably I, I want a drop shell for the near breast falling into the, the far breast. And as I said before, uh, let's take the chance to define the, the surface where the shell falls on. Another thing that you want to keep in mind with the drop shadows is that they get blurrier as you move away from the origin point. For example, uh, this is my origin point. This is moving away from the origin point. So it gets blurrier, gets less defined. It's sharper right at the start, as you can see, but then it gets less defined, more obscure. And you want, when you are painting, you want that drop shadow to transition into, into a form shadow in a natural way. Actually, note that I say that I'm going to do that here. That gives a bit more um, uh, um, a good dose of realism to, to your piece. And Let's see, maybe, maybe, maybe uh, I can, I can focus better <laughs> and try to finish the, the feet. That instep, the curve of the instep, the ankle. And you know what? Um, based in the light duration, I, I have been inventing basically <laughs> because I don't think the original had a light duration. No, <laughs> it didn't. It didn't. I, I have been uh, phoning it in, as they say. So, uh, sorry. I really want a drop shadow here. Okay. Mm. Although, to be frank, I, I am not sure if you are capable to to press against the tie so much. I mean, maybe in some individuals you can, but that, uh, it, it feels like it should not be that, um, that squishy, you know? I know the knee is safe because it's on the other side. So maybe 
what I'm going to try to do to make it look more proper, and sorry if I, I didn't notice it earlier. But that's the fun thing of uh, going through through these exercises. You iterate many times and you keep going, keep going, make it better, a little bit better than the time before. And that, that looks better, that looks better. I mean, the knee is obviously pushing against uh, the, the tie above, but uh, it should not push as much, you know, because it's basically almost knee against knee. So some hardness, some solidity of the other knee, the one that's getting pushed up, uh, should be preserved. It does not help that I am doing this without uh, a reference. I bet you can tell. Uh, I did use reference for the original, but as I said, it was a very quick exercise. And as I said before too, I am usually more efficient when I am just drawing <laughs> and not talking at the same time. Okay, let's make that shadow a bit blurrier as it moves away from the jaw. Let's add some hint to background here. The forearm gets a bit more uh, boxy as it moves towards the waist. So I want to preserve that boxiness there. Okay, let's dive in into the the feet. Instead, padded area. Okay. Let's use a bit of liquefy. I feel I have no use liquefy that, that much here. I should have used it that much because that had that will have made some areas uh, faster. Let's indicate surface
I probably want to to add some ring light here, some touch of ring light. I also noticing that the, the leg is too, too short. I am so nervous that <laughs> I am probably using this much, a bit too much. Yeah, that's better. You can simply uh, come and try to, because they are quite near, so there is no, um, sorry. You can come and just draw, draw this line. See from the ankle to the knee, more or less how long it is. And you can tell that it's basically the same. It was not a bad measure. Oh, it was not a bad call to fix the length of the of the leg. The the one on top. I want to zoom out a bit so I have a better sense of how how this area of the ankle should look because I really want to tackle the rhythm that I was telling you at the start basically Keep it like that, okay? The lateral side should be lower and the medial side should be uh, let's <laughs> let's write it down. Medial side should be higher. This is for the ankle obviously. And if you notice, this is the opposite for the for the forearm, in the forearm, the lateral side is higher and the medial side is lower. You know what? I just noticed that this region here and this one here seem to be semi-related and that should not be. This region is the continuation of the, of the tie. So maybe I should just lower this one a bit more. It's a unintended tangent. And you should try to avoid those. Okay. Um, Let's throw a small form shadow there. Uh, usually for for the arm and the form, I want to keep them like a bit curved. So let's add that to liquify. That curvy 
uh, counter I also want to add some value to the far side of the of the face. And some for the socket of the eye too. Let's get back to the foot. Um, going to merge that area. Okay, for the small too, I want to change its angle and make it like it's uh, curving inwards. Okay. That's better. I, I was not aware that um, that the twos were that flat. Some feet that have flat twos, they have the same length. Uh, but if you want to make it more aesthetic, try to try to give it a rhythm that moves the the length of the twos higher towards the middle side. Okay. You go shorter from the little two on the lateral, lateral side and you move higher towards the big two in the medial side. Um, I, think, I think this is a good change. Let's try that again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, six years ago, now. Um, yeah, I, I am surprised the, the iPad didn't crash, but usually does. <laughs> and I hope this was useful. Uh, I am going to do a second part that includes the... Okay, it seems like I spoke a bit too soon. Uh, the, mm, the application crashed, uh, so that's why you are seeing uh, number two at the corner. And that's okay, actually, because uh, I got some time to see what other areas of improvement, or improvement could, uh, could be tackled. Um, yeah, basically what I am seeing now, there are some overlaps that could be enhanced. And I feel the ribcage could stick a bit less actually um, maybe I will try to separate the breast a bit um, what else uh, also let's try to complete the right foot it's a it's a bit of an awkward crop at the bottom because you are seeing the instep like this finishing and you kind of expect to see the tools but it's cropped what else? Um, 
let's see. Mm, I will keep polishing it. I feel it was a bit rough. I mean, for the objectives of this exercise, I think it, it is okay. You can see a, a clear uh, completeness. Sorry, um, a clear imp improvement and the image is more complete now. <laughs> um, I also feel like <laughs> I could speak a bit better this time. I was so nervous the, um, in the first session. And it is a bit earlier today. It is 10.40 p.m. here in Honduras. And yeah, basically that. So let's continue. Um, let's make another layer. Just to see what improved from this the the previous session. Hopefully it doesn't crash because um I don't know. Um it seems like Procreate does not like to have a uh, too many layers at certain resolution and the screen is recording. Um Actually, as I was told you before, I am not doing the recording of the audio in the iPad because it will simply crash too often to be useful. So if you want to help me <laughs> getting a newer iPad, you can help me over Patreon. I was telling you that not only you will have me with that, but <laughs> you will get the non safer world version of this video. It's going to be an extra session after I finish this one. And I, uh, I am probably going to do some else too. Uh, and, and you will get many more rewards, actually. So it is a good value. Uh, obviously, be as a side, but... <laughs> I um, I work very hard on, on that Patreon, so yeah, just consider it. If this was of, if this was in some way, shape, or form helpful for you, and uh, let's see, I really like uh, these values, these streaks of value here because it kind of gives a repeating pattern with these other streaks of value and it separates masses, okay? It's so basically, you are seeing the serratus, this one, right? The serratus uh, transitioning into the obliques. And I also fixed the the thing I was telling you before that the rib cache was sticking too much. And I kind of want to um, give it a, a thicker contour, uh, um, like it was a cell shaded character. <laughs> I think that will fit it. I usually don't do that because I like lost edges and you cannot have lost edges with thick contours. It's like a clash of styles and I have tried it because I don't believe in styles actually, <laughs> but it does not mix well. It's not a good mesh, okay? So I will later decide what I want to keep if the thicker contour or the lost edges that so far, there are <laughs> and any, <laughs> but I can implement them, okay? Um, I feel the arm is severe lacking of volume. It feels like lacks volume right now. Uh, I'm going to do that in the previous layer. I know I, I created a new one to see better the difference, but to be frank, I, I know my iPad, I know it, it I, I am tempting fate right now. <laughs> know that I was working on this, in this area, I noticed something. Overlaps, the order of the overlaps is very important. 
as important, as equally important as the overlaps themselves. You don't just put overlaps haphazardly. So in this case, I want to show the viewer that the, the deltoid is wrapping over the biceps, it's crossing to the other side. And if you notice in the past one, the deltoid was not crossing to the other side. You see? No, it's clear. Let's make it clearer even, even more clear to the viewer uh, how that forms uh, wraps around. I really like to, to make my stuff very uh, tactile, like very gritty. I usually don't like um, airbrush stuff, uh, too clean stuff. And I feel that's like a, a different um, visual experience. And I, I favor that kind of uh, feeling. <laughs> um, She's not too muscular, but I'm going to bump that biceps a bit. Um, that's another thing that you should think about your character. You are not just play, placing lines. If you are uh, using uh, a reference, I am not using one here, but if you are using one, try to not look at the reference too much. Try to create, you are doing like a translation, okay? The translation is an entirely new um, thing. And many people that work in translations can tell you that. I, I did that for a while. And it's like a, uh, it has some subjectiveness to it. It should be faithful, right? But it should be your own thing. I, I hope that <laughs> it's not too confusing. So yeah, think about your character, what you want to convey, how is this character? And maybe even imagine a voice, imagine the character animating it, that, that will help you, um, like it's moving in your mind, okay? That will help you um, improve, create things that are not in reference, or just use the, even better, just use the reference, uh, very lightly, just like a initial step, and then you can go and do your own thing. You will feel much more accomplished that way. Obviously, if you are just studying, uh, yeah, decide what you want to study, and and if that uh, aim, that objective, uh, demands uh, close attention to the reference, do that. But I am talking about your own work. Uh, your own illustration, your own character sketches, etc. I'm really sorry that I <laughs> I wasn't working, I was just talking. I am like the opposite on the first session that I feel the first session was me just working in silence in, in some parts and, and oh, I need to talk. <laughs> I started talking uh, when I realized I was not doing that. And yeah, uh, growing pains, as people say. Um, I will try to, to improve that in the next, in the New York videos. Um, at least it's not, this is not a stream, right? <laughs> I feel it will be even worse if I was streaming. I really want to give a hint of the tendon of the triceps. I know it's in the back, but some of it can pick on the side. that the tendon starts like uh, the midpoint of the arm and descends to the ulna.
let's give the back of the palm some value. Does the back of the palm has a proper name to it? I don't know. <laughs> to be to be frank, I don't know. This value here is dividing the extensors group from the flexors. You have to remember that the extensor groups is what goes to the back of the hand and um, the palm, sorry, and the flexor groups is this one here that goes to the palm. Okay, so here you can see that this is going behind, you know. And this one is going on top. So you have this, um, this overlap here, indicating to the viewer that um, let's catch or review and let me close. I hope that didn't, uh, was not recorded. This was like a Discord notification. Um, yeah, editing my audio recording is going to be a mess. Uh, but I, I think it's not too bad. It's, that's why I decided to record on the night because uh, on daytime it's going to have so much noise from traffic, dogs around people around it's, um, yeah places here are way too close to each other um, I want to attempt a drop shadow for the for uh, my deltoid I think it fits one thing you, you have to keep in mind that uh, you are editing at some point. It is true that we have a source of light. In this case, the source of light is coming like, sorry, this way, right? And yeah, uh, I am trying to render based on that source of light. But if something is not like uh, aesthetically pleasing, I can edit out that part. You will notice this very frequently uh, with the with this drop shadow of the notes. <laughs> and you see why uh, people usually try to, to catch uh, old paintings, even newer il illustrations, portraits, and you will not see that uh, shadow very frequently because it's not very aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> Uh, what I want to do sometimes um, is to uh, transition that drop shadow of the nose into the form shadow of the face. And yeah, basically you are creating a shallow shape that encompasses the drop shallow of the nose, the drop shallow of the lower lip too, the form shallow of the shin, and the form shallow of the face. And if you are uh, want to do something fancier, uh, there is this thing called the triangle of Rembrandt, Rembrandt tri triangle, sorry. I think you have seen it. Uh, going softer as it moves away from the casting object. Basically, the the Rembrandt triangle is use the shape that uh, results from combining the rough shadow of the nose with the um, form shadow of the face 
plus the small uh, light section that interrupts the, the, the wall shape here. So that doesn't look too bad. I, uh, I am still being proper with the lining. And I did something very important that I forgot to mention. Uh, usually you, you want to avoid um, islands of value. Uh, islands of value is when you have... Um, um, I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to digress too much, but basically you don't want to have many shelf shapes that are isolated, okay? Your shelf shapes should be fused as much as possible, okay? And that's something we are doing here. I am doing here. I don't know why I say it. We like, <laughs> I see some streamers that say we repeatedly and that sticks. So it's like we, the chat plus the streamer. <laughs> and that, that, that's what, uh, where, where I got the, the idea. <laughs> But they, yeah, basically, is what I am doing here. And I don't want to <laughs> not even choose another color or another brush because I am afraid of crashes. You can see that uh, shell shape. Actually, this is not a good way to, to show that. But <laughs> I, I hope you get the idea. You, you, basically, you have many shells into a single one. to render a bit the neck muscles. I can get away without doing that because the, the face is very stylized. But that, that's why I was telling you before, you edit out what you what uh, adds value to your composition and you remove the things that don't add value. Let's check out, um, yeah, that's better. Um, I, I will start fusing because I was getting lag and <laughs> let's free up some memory for this old iPad trying to do its best with Procreate. That food was a bit too big. Let's angularize the twos. So it has more volume than before. Especially the big one. Let's improve the line width so I have more space to play around with the tools. Okay. Oops, cannot check again the previous version, but uh, yeah, <laughs> going better.
Another thing I I I, I noticed in the new iPads that I I think it will be very useful for this kind of situation is that it has a hover like the Syntix and yeah right now I have to mark sometimes the things I am doing because there is a cursor but that cursor it's only visible when you um, are actually placing down strokes. In the newer iPads, uh, I am pretty sure there is a hover function like the Cintiq. And yeah, you can see that in the recording. Uh, that's very useful. Want to try something? Uh, usually, uh, the tip of the fingers has a higher concentration of blood vessels. So that part uh, has a darker value and it's more saturated. I am not playing with saturation here. And I wanted to keep it a bit simple because it's the first one. And yeah, but it, it's, if I was, uh, <clears throat> like doing a more complete thing i will bump the saturation there let's recover some of that knee maybe um Make a clearer drop shadow there. Um, Added a bit of occlusion to the uh, to that region. Okay, a second crash. Let's try to help it, and let's for that let's remove the time lapse. And I'm going to check my canvas size. Yeah, let's keep let's keep this one. Oops, no, I don't want that. <laughs> that will crop the thing I am doing right now, and it's not acceptable. Um, maybe that one still. It's not uh, too bad of a downgrade, I think. Let's do that. Hopefully, that will that will help the the yeah, application uh, in this new session. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's do a bit more of a spherical rendering to the knee. Let's make the right one stick out a bit more. Clean that contour. Maybe it's too thick right now. For the insteps, sometimes 
I want to give it a rendering or a shading similar to an egg. I feel that um, that conveys the, the form of the instep quite well. So I'm giving it a egg-like uh, shading. And that form could be further improved for the tips, I think. Mm -hmm. I am recovering that ring light at the knee. I feel that was a desirable thing. I don't want it to be too um, too thick because uh, it's a secondary light and it cannot. Uh, over one the main light. Okay, this is the area where it crashed. <laughs> that that area I was going to yeah I remember where I left. Uh, this area was too bright. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, I had to lower the contrast too because it's something that's moving away from us. Okay. So you don't want to emphasize by increasing or leaving an increasing contrast in those areas. That's better. Um, let's see if I can give a hint to the nails here. I could have used <laughs> that pass resolution here, but uh, it can't be helped. Uh, I am trying to improve the value of the insertion of the biceps here because what you have with the uh, extensors is a form that looks like this. See? That's why uh, some of the extensors, especially uh, towards the biceps, is uh, not facing the light. Uh, this. Uh, small insertions are creating uh, a side that is not facing the, the main line. Now that I look at her, uh, I can justify <laughs> going for a for a thick contour. Basically, inadvertently went that way in the second session. So let's stick with it. It's actually not a bad decision because for social media, for example, you want things that catch your attention quickly. Remember that you as an artist are uh, 
you are basically just one element of many people if you don't increase your contrast and uh, that might uh, make people don't look at your art more uh, attentively it's kind of sad because uh, in some in s s some works do benefit from lower contrast some kind of low key atmosphere some kind of low key mood can be desirable and it's a shame you have to think in those terms but if you are not uh, to depend on social media then don't, don't worry Yeah, it does not look bad, the thick contour. I could have made it more angular, perhaps, but I feel uh, I already extended myself a bit too much. <laughs> and you are probably, if you are still listening to me, you're probably wondering at what moment I am going to finish this. It's actually, I could have left it uh, quote unquote finish before but I feel if I was able <laughs> to show you previous sessions you will notice that uh, that is an improvement on on those sessions let's see um Yeah, for the taste like the nails, I definitely could have used a better, um, a higher resolution. <laughs> okay, uh, let's try to. To modify the canvas size just a little bit. And just for compositional purposes. I could have explained it. I was tempted to explain why I decided on this new crop. It's obviously something regarding composition. However, uh, as I said before, I feel like I have extended myself a bit too much. Um, but also because composition, honestly, uh, is more of a feeling it's more like a very, very subjective decision, a compositional decision. And yeah, you might decide that it was better before, I don't know. I, I have my reasons. Uh, it's not only gut feeling, it's, gut feeling is some of it, but it's not the total of it. I want to create a plane that really contains her. <laughs> uh, 
and add a bit of convergence. Cannot be that strong, right? Because um, it is a two point perspective. You can still feel some convergence and it's hard. <laughs> so that means you can go greater than life. You don't have to be that uh, accurate. Yeah. Many people do prefer that. You are not a Xerox machine, a human photocopy machine. You bring your prejudice, your bias, your experience, what really speaks to you, and that will uh, inform your creative decisions. It has to inform your creative decisions. Otherwise, you are just doing a rough task that could have been made being made better by a, a camera, for example. Sorry, <laughs> I feel I digressed terribly there. But if you catch my vibe, uh, that's that means it was not. <laughs> a waste crumbling like that <laughs> so here I want to to create a lot of shadow for the leg because drop shadows uh, I said as I said before help us to ground things make them make them feel tangible and I also want to to separate these planes uh, of the cube a bit. A bit of drop child from the hand. Um, the drop child of the leg gets softer as it moves away from the calves because that's the that's the origin point of the drop child. So, in this region, it gets softer, it gets lost. Um, The ankle is not convincing me uh, too much right now. Uh, I am de-emphasizing the her left 
Oh man, <laughs> I can't believe I did this. <laughs> oh yeah, basically I got um, I got confused by the crossing of the. <laughs> Uh, um, yeah, <laughs> I think many of you, if you are still around, noticed that mi mistake way earlier, right? Uh, yeah, basically, the orientation of the foot is totally messed up. Really, really, I really messed up there. Well, at least I noticed it. A bit late, but I noticed it. So, um, I should make this quicker because I, I just realized that I was giving her two left feet. <laughs> uh, I am so embarrassed. I, <laughs> I think I am, I am maybe red of embarrassment right now. But yeah, it could have been worse. I could have rendered this video, posted, and <laughs> and the mistake will be there. So I have not rendered the details in this time because, as you uh, as you could see, I made a big mistake and that took me a long enough time. So it's better to have some play, form of placeholder until you are very sure that's what you want, that's the proportion you want, that's the silhouette you want. And in this case, I think it works. However, I am going to leave this, uh, this food for a while. I'm going to focus on this new one. On this other one <laughs> is not new at all. That far ankle uh, is not very visible. I could break a line there instead because it's moving away from us. Let's record some of that contour. Um yeah, that I was going to say that's it, but <laughs> I feel I could make that more elegant that that foot that left foot could be a bit more gracious. See? A bit more gracious and not gracious enough.
I feel uh, as, as I get a bit more experience, I use uh, liquify more to recover or to create gesture and less to fix things. <laughs> That's a very valid way to use liquify. Yeah, I am not going to detail the nails as I did with the other foot because it is getting far from us. It's also very low in the composition. So you want to remove uh, details or de-emphasize details from regions that are near the limits of the canvas, right? So for that end, I might want to do that it's a bit of a loss edge, the only loss of edge <laughs> that I have uh, there, maybe for the cube too. So the body automatically, automatically uh, jumps to the side a bit more. Okay, <laughs> see, it seems like I, I am going to, to, to choose a lower resolution next time. Uh, but yeah, basically, now I feel it's done. I think it's uh, better, not only better than the original one, <laughs> but also it's an improvement over the previous sessions. Um, and yeah, um, I am going to cut the video. This is the last session of the public session. I am going to do uh, an exclusive one and uh, that is going to be non safe for war and it's going to have some alts and probably going to do uh, something, something extra. Okay, I am going to. Uh, annotate the the drawing and I basically every week in, on my Patreon I post annotated works so basically I go over the work and I start to put anatomical notes and perspective notes, compositional notes it's, it's very useful or so I have been told <laughs> and, and yeah the last advertisement that you're going to hear from me is that uh, please consider uh, supporting me on Patreon. It's this one. Patreon.com slash fibers. Um, I have uh, from tiers from one dollar to fifty-five. <laughs> In every single one, even the one dollar tier has exclusive content, and I post very frequently. And I am going to try to stick with the with this project of doing uh, narrated videos. Hopefully, the newer ones are going to be better, a bit more concise, uh, a bit more useful. I think this one, well. You let me know if it was useful or not, but I feel I, I try to, I, I manage to keep my uh, anxiety a bit low enough to tell useful uh, tips and hints. And yeah, and basically and that's all the changes I was going to do to this drawing, at least in its public form. And see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.